Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, a channel about making computer role-playing games using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. Uh, in this video I'm going to continue um, my series on using text input instead of links for Twine. Um, in this video we're going to deal specifically, or we're going to start to deal, with items, which to a great extent are the sort of the heart of games like this. A lot of the stuff that you as a player will do in a game like this is probably going to involve choosing which items to use and, and where to use them and how to use them. So we're going to start with the very basics. If we look at uh, the screen, this looks basically the same as it did in the last video. It says you're in the southwest corner of the mansion. It gives you the exits. We have the window to enter um, what you want to do, but there's a new um, a new line which is you can't see any items of interest and although you can't see it I've added the possibility of using the inventory command which at the moment um, will just tell us that we don't have any items because we don't start with any items in this particular game. So uh, the game looks basically the same as it did before. We walk around this little miniature mansion. If we try to go the wrong the wrong way we get a little message that says that we can't go that way. But if we go into this corner, the northwest corner, we now see we now have this new message which is you can see an elaborately wrought golden key. And if we choose to get the key or take the key um, we'll find that we will pick it up. Um, it's, it's sort of gone from the room. It now says we don't see any items of interest. And if we go inventory, it tells us that we are carrying an elaborately wrought golden key. So, and of course, uh, later we will be programming ways in which we can usefully use that key. Um, how we could make the key a little bit harder to, to get than simply having it in the room. We, you know, we could have it hidden within a chest of drawers or something like that. Um, but for now, we're just going to talk about the, the basics of items, setting up, um, setting up items, displaying the fact that they're there if the player is in the right room, being able to pick them up and being able to look at um, what items the player has. So let's go into the code. And we can see that um, I've added quite a few pages. Um, we have, as before, we have initialize, which sets up all the, the data that we need. Input, which is the place where we display the current state of the game, or at least those parts of the current state of the game that are accessible to the player. And we get the player's um, input. And then from there, we process, go to process action, and process action um, sends us to specific pages depending on what command um, the player has entered. So if, if it chooses to move, if they choose to move, we go to move. And I've added a couple more. We have inventory, which displays which items, if any, the player has. And then I have get and get to, which handles um, picking up items. Um, I could have done this in one page, but it, um, it's, a bit, it, it's a bit easier to see what's happening if, if, if you put it in two, and we'll, we'll see that when we get to it. Um, so let's go to initialize first and look at all the new, the new stuff that we have. So I have a new array, which is B, I guess B for backpack, um, and it has the items carried by the player, and they're stored as numbers, and it says equivalent to I array, and we'll see what that means when we get down to it. Those are the commands, we've already got that. This is the I array. Now at the moment, there's only one item, because um, I only needed one to, to display what I wanted to display. And uh, each item has its own array, so it's a two-dimensional array, with several elements. 
Um, element zero is the short description, and element one is the long description, and then element two is a number, and that simply tells us where the item begins. In this case, the number is two, meaning that it begins in room or location number two, which if we look at P, we can see is the northwest corner. Hang on, I didn't highlight that properly. The northwest corner of the mansion. Um, you might also notice that in the uh, long description, I've got these tags. I've got uh, less than B greater than key, and then it says less than slash B greater than. And what, what that does, uh, it turns on bold, which is the, the B, and then it turns off bold, which is the slash B. So it'll be an elaborately wrought golden key in bold. Um, and let's just look at that again, because it might not have been obvious. Let's go... You can see that that's um, bold. It, it doesn't uh, it doesn't show up quite as well as I would have liked to be honest. But the idea of doing that was um, to tell the player that the description of this is an elaborately wrought golden key. But to manipulate it, you don't have to say elaborately wrought golden key. You just have to say key. Um, and I think maybe bold isn't isn't good enough. I might. I might underline it as well. Um, I could have put it in capital letters, but I was worried that the player might think that they needed to enter it in capital letters, and that's not that's not true. Um, but what I wanted was some sort of way of saying, this is an elaborately wrought golden key. Um, they could probably work out, if they're familiar with the genre at least, they'd probably work out that you can just say get key, use key, drop key, etc. Um, but I wanted to have some way of making making it clear what the... Um, what the short version of it was. Um, so I have to say that, at least in this browser, I don't think that's um, really meeting its goal. So I might um, I might fix that in the next video. But anyway, that was the idea. So we have short description, long description, sorry, short description, long description. So the short description being the one that um, is used in commands, so get key, pick up key, take key, drop key, use key, offer key to guard, you know, etc. And the long description being the one that is um, used when displaying um, that the item is in a particular place. And then we have the number. And if there were more items, of course, there'd be more, more arrays there. Um, so we have B, we have I, we have M. Um, which is a variable set to four, to the maximum number of items the player can carry. Now, you may not want to have a maximum. Um, you might think it's a little bit unrealistic. Why is picking up a key going to make the player have less space for stuff? You might want to have a system where every every item has a weight, for example, and there's a maximum number, you know, maximum weight that the player can carry. Or you might not want to have a maximum. Um, but inventory management is uh, a good source of, of sort of making puzzles. Like if the player only has a limited number of items, um, you can set up more interesting uh, decisions and more interesting solutions. Um, we'll, we'll come to that, to examples of that in, in subsequent videos. But So I've decided to have a maximum for now um, with the acknowledgement that you don't have to have one and with the... Um, the caveat that there are, you know, more realistic ways to uh, to simulate the inability of a person to sort of carry heaps of stuff. But anyway, and then we have a for next, uh, sorry, a for loop, which goes from one to m, and it sets all the uh, all the slots of the b array, the backpack array, the array of what the what items the player is carrying to an empty string. Um, I could have also set it to zero um, and then worked with it like that. Um, that probably would have been more consistent because when there's an item the player's carrying, um, that is a number. 
but uh, one of the good things about Twine is that you can have arrays that are mixtures of strings and numbers, and you don't need to do any special um, any special code to make that happen. Um, in a lot of languages, it would be quite difficult to do something like this, where we have a string and then a number and a number and a number and a number, or at least you'd need to have particular commands to to set that possibility up. But um, in Twine, you can freely do it. Um, probably would have been more consistent to use numbers. But anyway, um, even if you're not, just bear in mind that even if you're not going to have any maximum on how many items the player can carry, um, you're still going to need to do this thing of setting up B because, uh, as we'll see later, it needs to have some sort of value um, when, you're, when you're doing inventory um, or it'll generate an error. So if you don't have an M or an equivalent variable, you might want to go you might want to say, well, the maximum number of items the player can carry is the number of items in the game, which um, is defined by i. So you might want to go for z equals one, z is under or equal to i. But you do need to do you do need to do this. Um, at least the way I've coded it, you do need to you do need to um, set up the array by putting these sort of blank values in all of the slots even if you're not going to have a maximum and the, the rest of the uh, the rest of this page we've already looked at so I won't go through that again okay so in input uh, most of this is is as before the only new stuff is um, to do with printing the items so let's look at that so we we have a temporary variable Z we set it to zero and as the note says this uh, this uh, variable will be set to one if um, any any item is listed. In other words, as we go through the player's virtual backpack, if we find any item at all, we'll set Z to one. Um, and I've got flag here. Um, a flag, the expression flag in terms of variables, means that it's a a variable which starts at zero. And it's set to one if a particular condition is met, and it's only ever it's only ever zero or one. It's not a it's not a diff, it's not a different type of variable. Um, this is just a a normal number, but just in terms of the way it's used, it's only ever zero or one. So that's that's all that flag means. Um, there are specific types of variables called booleans. That you can set to true or false, and they only ever have those values. But I don't, um, I don't tend to use them. I think it's simpler to just use numbers um, and just set them to zero or one. But anyway, so we have a uh, a for loop which starts at one and goes to i dot length minus one. Um, in other words, it goes through every item of the i array, which at the moment is only one. And it looks at i, y, two, which is to say it looks at the um, it looks at the number. That's number zero. That's number one. This is number two, and it, its value is two. So it looks at the it looks at the um, the room where that item should be. And if the item is in the same room as the player, in other words, if i y2 is equal to L, which is location, then we are going to print the item. And also, if z is 0, in other words, if this flag variable here ha um, hasn't yet been set to 1, then we set it to 1 and we print the text, you can see, colon, and then a line break. Um, that's the only purpose of z. It's just that when if we just had, um, if we just had an elaborately wrought key, um, I suppose the player would get that it's meant the key's meant to be in the room, but it se seems a bit primitive. It, it it seems better to me to say you can see an elaborately wrought key. But similarly, if there was more than one item in the room, we wouldn't want you can see before each of the items. We wouldn't want you can see an elaborately wrought key. 
you can see a uh, pair of sturdy boots, you can see something, something else. I mean, the player would know what it, you know, know what was meant, it would be clear, but again, it would seem a bit inelegant. It would seem a bit better to me to have you can see and then the names of the three items. So that's why we have that flag. The flag is so that this you can see is only printed uh, before the first item and not before the others. And the second reason for it, we'll, we'll, we'll come to. But so, uh, so we, we print you can see if that's relevant. And then we print I, Y, one, which is to say the long description. So an elaborately wrought golden key, for example. And then, and then a line break. And then that's uh, that's the end of the that's the end of the if, which is that if if the item is in the same room as the as the um, player character, and then if z equals zero, this is the second use for z. If z is still equal to zero, which means we haven't found any items in the room, then we need a well, we don't need one. We could just not print anything, but. Um, I thought it would be better to say you can't see any items of interest, and the rest of the the rest of the page is um, as I've, as previously discussed. So 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 this uh, this bit of this particular page, the new stuff, is basically that it lists any items that might be in the room, or tells you that there are no items in the room. So, when we go to process action, um, I've dealt with all of this, so I won't go through this again. But there are now new um, new possibilities. We had we had this before. If y is zero, y being the the number of the command that the program has detected that the player has entered. Um, to put it in a very long-winded way, we have this list of commands here, and it goes through what the player enters and says, well, can I see north, east, south, west, get, take, inventory, attack, fight, talk, or look? And if it can, it assigns a number um, based on the position of the particular string in this array. So if the player says go north, it will end up assigning the number 1 to that. East is 2, south is 3, get is 5, and so on. So we've already done, and uh, I've just noticed that <laughs> I've still said verb, and um, it shouldn't be verb, it should be command, but anyway. Uh, right, so we have this number, y, which is the number of the command. If y is zero, then just say, uh, give a message that says, I don't know what you mean. If y is less than five, in other words, it's one, two, three, or four, but it's, it's not zero, because that would have already triggered, then we go to the move. Um, subpage, which I dealt with last um, last video, and here we have some new ones. Else, if y is under seven, in other words, if y is five or six, which is get or take, then we we go to this new page get, and if y is equal to seven, then we go to this new page inventory. Otherwise, it's a command that's in the array, but I haven't done anything about uh, enacting that command yet, so it just Give you a um, message that says well, I haven't 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 put that in yet. All right, so these are the new bits we have to look at: get and inventory. So let's begin with get. So there's uh, two parts to this, and this is why I've put it on two pages. I could have put it on one page, but um, instead of having go to get to, I could have just had all the code in get to in here, but I thought it would be um, easier to understand if I did it the way that I did it. So the first thing we do, the thing we're doing on this page, is we're looking in the player's virtual backpack and seeing if there's any spare slots for arrays. So we set Z to zero. Z is going to be the slot that we're going to put the item in. And we do a for loop, which goes from 1 to, to M, which, as you remember, is the maximum number of items the player can um, carry it one time, and if the wyth slot of the B array is equal to this 
empty string, which they all will be at the beginning, then we set z equal to y. In other words, we say, all right, we can put it in slot 1. Now, one consequence of that is that it will put things in the top slot first, because it'll go to slot 1 and say, well, is b y equal to an empty string? Yep. OK, I'll set z to 1. And then it'll say, is b2 equal to an empty string? Yep. I'll set z to 2. What about b3? Yep, that is. And so it'll end up with, um, because because it goes from 1 to m, and because m is set to 4, z will end up being 4. So it will start with slot 4, and then it'll do slot 3 the next time, if, if the player gets a second item, and then, and then slot 2, and then slot 1, which is a bit sort of the opposite of what you'd expect, but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. So it goes through looking for an empty slot. There'll either be one or there won't. If z is 0, then there, there isn't one. And it says, well, you don't, you don't have any room to carry more items. Um, now, in a proper game, what you would do is, if you wanted to pick up a particular item, you would drop an item that you already have. So games of this type will usually have, um, well, will always have a drop command, which is sort of the opposite of the get command. But uh, I haven't yet programmed that. Um, so it says you don't have any room for any more items, and therefore it takes you back to input to, to um, choose something else. Or it goes to get to, where it sees whether you can, in fact, get another item. So here we are in get to. And this is just a little note to myself that Z is the slot that we're putting it the item in, and X is the string which the player uh, entered. So it's something like get 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 key or you know go north or whatever. It wouldn't be go north in this particular case because you wouldn't end up on this page. But uh, all right. So this is a very similar bit of coding to the way that we look for commands um, in the input, uh, sorry, in the, what's the, what's that other page called? In the process action page, which is we go through um, using a for loop, we go through all of the items. Um, so for w equals one, semicolon space, w is under or equal to i dot length minus one, w plus plus. And then we look at x dot replace dollars i w zero with capital x x x so in other words look at what the players entered see if i w zero replaced with capital x is different to x and what that what that means is see if dollars i dollars w zero is in x if, if it can be found in x now I W zero is the short description. So for the for the in the case of the key, it is just the string key. So what this whole line is doing is it's saying, does the string that the player has entered include the characters K E Y in order? Uh, we already know that it includes either get or take because we wouldn't be here if it didn't. But now we're seeing if it includes, for example, key. So. If so, then we set y equal to w. In other words, we say, ah, well, the player is trying to pick up item number w. It's trying to if the if we find key in the um, in the string, we assume ah, the player is trying to trying to pick up the key. Now, again, if the player enters the name of more than one item, the computer will use the one higher in the array. Um, that is. A, a similar out, a similar outcome to if the player enters more than one command, it'll pick the one that's higher in the array. Um, but having having set a value to y, then if y equals zero, in other words, if we couldn't find any item in the string, it says, well, what what are you trying to what are you trying to take? Or if i y two, that is the location of the item doesn't equal L. In other words, if they're trying to take an item that isn't in the room with them, again, it will say, what do you want to take? Now, I could have had different messages for this. I could have had, what do you want to take if y equals zero and that isn't here or something for, for this one. But I decided to have the same one because 
Otherwise, the player could get information about what items were in the game. I don't know that that would help them particularly much, but if the two uh, messages were different, that would tell the player, if they said get lantern or something, that would tell the player there was a lantern somewhere in the game, and it didn't seem to make sense that the player could, could work that out. So I have the same message, but there's no re real... Re I don't think it makes a huge difference. There's no real reason not to have two different messages. But anyway, if it's... Some, if it's uh, if we can't work out what item they want, or if the item that we think they want isn't isn't in the room with them, then just give them a message. Or, well, you can take it. So, give them a message that says, yes, you take the key. Um, set i, y2 equal to zero. In other words, in the i array, um, the key is no longer in room two, it's in the player's backpack. Um, and if, if we didn't do this, we would say you take the key, but then, but then the display of the room would still find that key in the room and would say, well, there's a key here. Um, and that's, of course, not what we want. So we have to set um, the location of the item to be, to be zero. And remembering that Z is the, um, the slot in the B array that we're making use of, we set bz equal to y. So the player now has, perhaps among other items, um, whatever item we've found in, uh, and assigned to the variable y. So having done that, the player might want to, of course, look at what they have. Um, in this game, not in this a mini demonstration, not particularly, but in a in a in a sort of proper game, they might lose track if they're picking up and dropping items and using items and going, okay, I don't want that anymore. Um, they might um, they might go, hang on, do I do I actually have the such and such? So that's why we have the inventory command, and um, that is dealt with here. So let's deal with this. So again, we have a flag, um, which is initially zero and it's set to one if we've um, found at least one item. We go in a for loop from one to M. We look at the relevant slot in the B array. If it doesn't equal, that's what exclamation mark equals means. If it doesn't equal an empty string, then we know we have to, um, we have to print something that tells them they've got this and we look at the Z flag. If Z is zero, we set it to one and we say, you are carrying. And uh, Z, this flag works exactly the same way as the analogous flag did um, on the input page where we're listing what items are in the room. Um, I thought it was best to have, you can see at the beginning of the list and only at the beginning of the list. And similarly, I thought it was best to have, you are carrying at the beginning of the list and, and only at the beginning of the list. And that's why we, that's one reason we have that Z flag. And then we print. Um, now this is a little bit complicated. It is I or dollars I square bracket dollars B square bracket dollars Y N square bracket N square bracket square bracket one N square bracket. So what does that mean? Well it means we are printing some uh, item from the I array and the first number in the I array is is defined by by as in dollars b square bracket dollars y n square bracket in other words by the number that's in the the um, array of items that the player is carrying and the second number is one indicating that it is the uh, for i, something one is the long description. So in this case, it would say an elaborately wrought key or something like that. So it prints, you are carrying an elaborately wrought key and then uh, when we have more items and get more items, it'll, it'll print more of them. And after each one, it prints this less than br greater than, um, which is just a, a line break and a return or an enter. And then uh, and, and that's the end of the for, that's the end of the of the for loop that's going through this um, through the through the character's backpack. 
and then, and this is again the other use of the Z flag, if Z is zero, then it says you don't have you don't have any items. And after printing whatever it needs to print, it goes back to back to input. So the player can remind themselves of what they um, of what they of what they are carrying. So having set up items and having uh, allowed the player to take items and, and having allowed the player to look at what items they've taken, um, which is all we've done so far, we can now start to get into the more interesting uses of items, um, using the items or, or, or various effects of having or not having particular items. So that is uh, what I will be covering in my next video. Um, I hope that was useful or interesting to at least some of you and I hope you will tune in next time.